It's the right way round, Karen. Oh, brilliant. How weird is that? So all the letters. Oh, okay. So me carrying on like that. Is... <laughs> That's really brilliant. Okay. Um, differences to other um, brushes that you use for other media like acrylic and uh, oil. And I'm also going to talk about brush cleaning. And then the last thing I thought I'd talk about was brush maintenance. I've got in front of me here um, an enormous pile of brushes. I thought I would start with the way that I store the brushes. For um, Oh, that's a little cleaning thing. I must remember to talk about that. That's a little brush cleaner that I quite like. Oh, that's around the wrong way. Okay, I'm going to start with how I store my brushes. This is called Art Bin. And um, what's brilliant about this art bin is if I turn it like that, there are little holes. If I turn it further, hopefully you can see the little holes at the um, end there. And the same on the other end. And that means that this is the um, kit that I use. Oh, I'll move them out of the way. It's a bit distracting, isn't it? These are the brushes. These are the brushes that I take when I'm teaching or when I'm traveling, but mostly I'm teaching all the time. So uh, the brilliance of this brush holder is that it's got little foam bits to store my brushes, plus I can uh, shut the lid and then the air holes mean that not one of my brushes has ever gone moldy. I haven't had one issue with it. It's absolutely wonderful. So this is a really good set, though, a really good example of the sort of brushes that you do want to own for watercolour. The reason why I own masses of watercolour brushes is because um, I've spent so many years buying wrong ones and then buying another one and buying another one and never, ever throwing out any of the other brushes. How are you going today, Karen? I've got another few minutes to fill in before it's actually 10 o'clock and um, other people might be joining. Or it just could be you and me having a chat today. We could um, chat about something completely different <laughs> if you want to. We could chat about... Uh, what you've been doing lately. Karen's been making books. Um, right, I will continue talking about brush holders. This is one of the brush holders that I bought in the very beginning and um, it was completely useless, but isn't it a cute little design? Don't need that, don't use it anymore, but can't throw it out. What am I going to do with that? Uh, excuse the um, big white uh, reflection that'll go in a minute. Yes, that's exactly right, Karen. Thank you. The bristles are beautifully protected. And that brings me so nicely to the other one that I used to carry my watercolour brushes in. This is um, a good example of the sort of brushes that I used to paint in. Um. I've got some specialty brushes over here. Uh, I'll just move it a little more central there. Hey, Tiffany, how are you? <laughs> Karen says, save kebab sticks in the tube for marking. Yes, that's, that's not a bad idea. Uh, Tiffany, I was just showing um, Karen <laughs> YouTube live, but I was just showing Karen because I was early and luckily Karen was early as well. And uh, I was just showing Karen this tube that I bought. This is one of the early versions of um, carrying watercolour brushes that I bought, and it was next to useless. And really, it's super long. If I hold it that way, you can see it's <laughs> – oops, there. It's as long as my um, forearm. I'm just getting rid of that one. This is the second type of brush holder that I found. It's a super common – uh, type made of canvas and it's been sewn up. I've taught some um, amazing people who've made their own really beautiful brush holders. It's this design and then they've, um, they're have sewers and so they've made it out of beautiful material. So very achievable if you want to make your own, but it doesn't, I'm just going to fold the flap over, it easily damaged um, those bristles. 
which was the wonderful point that um, Karen just made. It rolls up, this one. You roll it up like so, and then it's got a, a little rope to hold it together. But the bristles still could get damaged in my bag if I didn't store it properly, which is why this art bin ended up being my perfect one. This one is the third type of brush holder that I ever purchased. Look at that little mess, hey? I love these. These are my acrylic and anything I want to uh, ruin brushes. There's a fabulous version here of a, a fan brush. You can see if I hold that up that I attempted, oh, just waiting for my camera to try and focus on that bristle there. Can it work it out? Maybe if I hold it down again and put my hand there. Yeah. Okay, this is me attempting to turn this bristle fan brush into a wisp brush. So I chopped out lots of the little bristles and uh, it just never was really awesome. I ended up just buying a set uh, quite recently, as a matter of fact. Uh, Tiffany says, what about the hairs of the brush in the tube? Do they stay straight? Well, Tiffany, I actually just gave up on the tube um, and unless you stored it really perfectly uh, vertical in your carry bag, then you couldn't guarantee um, that the bristles were going to be protected. But you could. Um, and it's a good one for um, acrylic brushes. This uh, one here is, is actually been really, really good. And uh, you can see that I've completely filled it up with house brushes. That's another household brushes. And these are not watercolour brushes. Nice way to test whether or not they're um, a watercolour brush is to feel them. And if they are stiff and po pokey, pointy, then uh, that is unlikely to be a watercolour brush. These are all bristles. Having said that, that's a soft one. So often... Uh, some brushes will transfer from acrylic and do watercolour as well. So anything soft is tends to be something for watercolour. Um, I've got, what else have I got in this little set here? This little cutie that I bought uh, when Riot, and everyone that I know remembers Riot having a half price sale, and I bought this Holcroft brush and haven't used it once, but <laughs> which happens with stuff. It seemed like a good idea at the time. I just haven't worked out. So if anyone's worked out what this cute little short thing's good for, it's called a filbert paddle. And it's um, cute. I just haven't worked out how to use it. Anyway, this is the third type of storage uh, for my brushes that I had trialed. And then I ended up with this beauty and I'll just close it again so you can see the name is Art Bin. Can't recommend this one enough. It's because of the holes, because of the way it stores everything. And this is the set of brushes that I ended up loving and using all the time. I'm going to set that one aside and talk about all different types of brushes. So I've got this lovely big pile here. I'm going to talk first about the Harker brush. Just move that down there. It is, I'm just going to scroll up on my uh, chat. Yep, all good. Uh, these are Harker brushes. I used to call them hake until I heard someone Japanese uh, pronouncing that word one day and they were saying Harker. They are a natural brush hair. It's goat and beautifully soft. And it's got a very particular binding where it's been bound with a really taut kind of um, string or cotton through holes into the wood there. And that's just a smaller version. I'll pile that up there. Wonderful for application of water. This I purchased as a... Um, I thought this might be more effective because the bristles are longer than, I'll just put it in comparison there, um, to the Harker. But it turns out to not be quite as soft. I'll just move them down. Not quite as soft as the Harker. So this one turned out to have awesome purposes for lifting because if I turn it up 
you can see, I hope, when it's wet, it forms a really beautiful bar that's um, amazing for lifting. Hey, Alex. <laughs> yes, that's how you say it, a haka brush. Thanks for joining me. Alex has moved away um, to the north in Australia. We're in lockdown in Sydney and Alex moved away just before the lockdown, so uh, lucky her. I'm talking about brush types at the moment and um, the haka, which all I use it for is water, but when you go on YouTube, there are people there who, yeah, lucky you, Alex, there are people on YouTube who just paint with haka brushes and it's rather marvellous. It's spelled H-A-K-E. I'll write down some stuff um, a little bit later. So I'm going to talk about some more types of brushes. I'm going to start with stuff that I love to use. I love these. I love them for water. And I'm going to put down here a little selection of brushes that I use all the time. Actually, I'm going to change out that one. I tend not to use this one. It's, a, it's like a really long filbert. I wonder if it's got a name. Yeah, it's, it's called a filbert, but it's a long, quite fat one. Um, it's, but I don't tend to use that as, anymore. That curve really would be marvellous for like petal strokes, something quite specific. So I don't tend to use that one. So I'm going to go back to what I do use. I'm just finding one more. I'm going to line up these ones here. And so I know that Karen, Tiffany and Alex all have brushes. If not this exact brush, then they have um, brushes that are incredibly similar to that. And Karen, Tiffany and Alex all know how to um, paint really, really well. So if they're also using this kind of brush, you can't go wrong. The brand is called, I'll try and hold it up, but I don't know if the camera will work out how to focus in on it. Yeah, Karen says they're wonderful. Alex has them. And Tiffany, everyone agrees. This is called Black Gold. I have to turn it towards me so I can read it. Black Gold 311. It's a series of brushes called Black Gold 311. This one is a size two. This one, oh, it might be the same. Is that the same? No, that's a little bit smaller. That's a size zero. And this is a triple zero. It does go smaller again and it does go larger again. But these three brushes are just what I use nearly all the time. Anything with a beautiful point is absolutely um, brilliant for watercolour. And the other thing about them, I'll just, oh, I'm finding a white spot there. Um, I'm going to spring it. It, the screen is back to front, so it, when I'm moving one direction, it goes. The screen goes in the opposite. Anyway, I'm springing it, and the point of that, and I turn it that way. Spring. Well, oh, that's not helping, is it? There. <laughs> when you have a brush that springs back, then that means that those bristles are going to have that memory of make sure that they maintain that beautiful position. And you can see also that they have this incredible point to them. And that is just brilliant for detail. And because they've got a belly to them, then you can paint fat strokes, thin strokes. Really, really awesome. So I'm continuing now with the brushes that are the brushes that I use every day. Quills, they're quills, so quills are bound with the wire. They have a plastic around them as well, a little bit different to the other types. I'm going to come back to the ways in which the brushes are made up. This is a, a flat brush, and I'll turn it that way. You can see it's got a thin edge to it. I have heaps of flat brushes. This one I'm using at the moment is rather marvellous. It's an artist first choice. It's Taclon. So the only brush I've talked about so far that was natural hair was the uh, Haka brush. That's um, goat hair. Nearly everything else I own is um, a type of hair that is synthetic. And I find that the synthetic brush hairs are able to replicate natural hairs really effectively these days. Oh, I paid about $35 for this one, probably $30 for that one, and probably $25. It's the cost of those was around that. I don't pay any more than $35 anymore uh, for brushes. 
this flat brush is marvellous for lifting off. It's lovely. Yes, thank you, Alex. I agree. Such good value. Um, yeah, so the flat brush is wonderful for straight edges and lifting off. I'll do a little bit of a demo of that if you're all still hanging around. Um, a bit later I'll do a demo. This is called a liner, and it's a little bit different to a um, rigger brush. A rigger brush is really, really long, and this is a liner is thin like a rigger. It's a type of round, but it's thin like a rigger, but it's a little bit shorter. So a liner brush would be a good two, possibly three centimetres long, whereas this little liner is, oh, maybe the bristles are a centimetre long. And I'm going to add that to that little list here, the, this pile of brushes that I use all the time. This one here is a little tiny filbert, and I'm surprised. This is a Cotman Windsor & Newton, so Cotman is their student brand. Um, and I find that this little shape is uh, like a small, I use it like a small version of my flat brush, except it's being a filbert, it has a slightly curved edge. So I find that the sort of lifting off that this little filbert can do just is a little bit different to the lifting off that my flat um, brushes can do. So um, that is the basic set. And then if you throw in a Harker brush for water application, then that's probably the cheapest way. So under, say, $100, you could get um, a really awesome set of watercolour brushes that will do everything you want. I'm just going to show you now my setup for when I'm making my YouTube videos. And I just have to lift it up. So also a few of the ladies here, um, Karen, Alex, and Tiffany, probably also have one of these. My husband made them out of uh, cedar, but lots of people have made their own out of any sort of substance uh, as long as it's waterproof. And um, the purpose of them is that once you've finished painting or in the middle of painting you can leave your brush sitting there loaded up with all the paint and it's not going to roll it's not going to put the water yes <laughs> oh tiffany absolutely i'll i'll um, bring one to class when we finally get out of lockdown i will be able to bring you in um this yeah so you can see here i've got two of the quills and that's another type of flat, so incredibly similar to this one. They both work really beautifully. This brush brand is called Art District, and it's a three-quarter. There's my lovely little uh, liner brush. Now, sometimes I, in, rather than using the Harker brush, this is a $4 brush. This is like, oh, I reckon I might have paid $50 for this. It is made quite magic. Um, I don't, this is awesome for travel because it doesn't matter much what happens to it or if someone borrows it, but this one, oh, it's so beautiful. It's got a mahogany handle. It's made in Sri Lanka. The brand is Kazan and, or, the, or maybe it's a Kazan and the brand is Neef. I'm not sure. It says Kazan by Neef on the side. Anyway, it's a size four and it's a mop. So when you turn a mop upside down, I'll just put that in the middle of my hand, it really is um, shaped. Thanks, Alex. Ah, really? Uh, Alex was just coming. She hasn't got hers with her. Are you talking about the mop or the haka? Um, Alex will reply in a second. Uh, the mop I find is brilliant for... Um, gathering up lots of water, plus it has a tip. So that's the disadvantage to the Harker brush is no tip. This one is shaped, but you're talking about an insane price difference. Ah, the brush holder, Alex. <laughs> um, so we're talking like $4 uh, versus like 40 or 50 I really can't remember how much I paid for this one. It's a quill, so it's got that binding where they've put the wires around at the ferrule level there. Um, talking about feral, uh, that brings me to, I'm going to get a piece of paper and talk about the parts of the brush. So if I lay down this brush, look at these brushes everywhere. I'm going to lay it down here. You've got this section, which is 
the bristles, this section here called the ferrule, or is it for all? Uh, thanks, Alex. Neef is the brand. And this section here is the handle. There are lots of other ways in which you might describe the bristle. I'm going to let you think up some um, different ones here and I'll jot them down as you think of different ways to describe the bristle. I'm just going to talk about how it varies from brush type to brush type. So in this one, we've got bristles, ferrule and handle. But what's really common is this one here where you've got bristles, ferrule and it's metal and then the handle. It's really common to have a, water, um, a handle that's made of wood. It's really common to have a, a ferrule that's made of metal. And in this, it's the, a machine has been used to press down on the bristles and keep them in place. I understand there's some glue in there as well, which is why you don't want to leave your brushes soaking in water. It might dislodge some of that water, uh, dislodge some of the glue, and that may cause some of your bristles to um, molt or, as in, fall out. Uh, the yeah, so the handle is often commonly wood. The huge advantage to this mahogany wooden handle. Hello, Sharon. Sharon says, where did I buy the black gold? Such a good question. I um, found recently someone who was um, bringing them into Australia. I'm not going to tell you where I found them because it would be the worst thing that I could do to you because the finding of this brush online and uh, searching for a cheap um, uh I can't think of the word. A cheap supplier is what has driven me round the world insane. I would search for Black Gold 311. That's the most important part, th those words. Black Gold 311 refers to the whole series. If I hold all of them, they're all Black Gold 311. And then go searching for um, someone that's, you know, near you uh, that will um, post it to you. Um and don't pay more than $35. Uh, they aren't, that's the maximum I would pay for those. Sharon, thanks for asking that question, Sharon. Uh, the, this handle here is made of a mahogany, and so the water has never affected it. I've left this for long periods of time sitting on a wet towel, and it's been completely unaffected. However, anything that has wood and uh, varnish on it will definitely be affected by sitting on anything wet. And this is another type of common handle. It's a um, wood and then it's been coated in some sort of paint and they start to peel off dramatically. As I go through my brushes in a moment, I'll, I'm going to find something where the paint has definitely peeled off. I'm going to show you another type of brush here that uh, it's that same beautiful brand, Neef. This is a Neef Rigger and um, it's got this same beautiful mahogany uh, handle. It has, putting it in line here, a metal ferrule and then the um, bristles. So some of the other things that the bristles are called, um, uh, some people call them hair. And uh, some people call them, there was another word, um, it'll come to me. Um, yeah, so, um, so different types, that's the different parts of the brushes, that's how they're made up. I've talked a little bit about natural, these are natural goat, this is a natural goat, and um, unfortunately, this mahogany uh, neef brush, ma it's a mahogany handle, uh, doesn't tell me whether or not this is a combination. I do have a lot of um, brushes or I have a few brushes that are combination part synthetic and part natural. But unfortunately, I have no idea whether this, I suspect this is a mix and I'm I suspect this has some natural in mixed in with the synthetic, but I think it's mostly 
synthetic. And again, it doesn't tell me on the handle, so I can't tell you for sure, but I can look that sort of stuff up, that's for sure. So um, that's different types of brushes. I've got a couple of really unusual types of brushes, starting with the Wisp. So I mentioned um, right at the beginning that the, I had this brush. I had a fan brush. I just threw it aside. Here it is. And I wanted to create a Wisp brush, which is a Wisp brush. Sometimes they call it a... a um, um, a rake brush or a comb brush. So I took scissors to it and I snipped, 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 snipped. And what I wanted to create was this. I'll just hold that one up. This is called a wisp brush. I'm just waiting for my camera to focus on that one there. And if I push the bristles down, you can see there's that length and some longer ones plus some missing. So cutting it out myself was a it's, it was just annoying. I just, I ruined the brush. I now can find it's useless for anything. So only just recently I purchased some, uh, a wisp brush that's um, made. Oh, and talking about handles, this handle, this ferrule, there's the metal ferrule, there are the bristles. This particular brand called Aqualon, Royal Aqualon Wisp has a, um, I was getting to the handle part, it's plastic and I'm stunned at how many ways I've found to use this little, I'll just show you the tip, it's um, chiseled and I've been lifting out and doing all sorts of awesome stuff. Um, in, so you don't have to reach for um, a stick, you don't have to reach for a, a pick, you don't have to reach for anything. You've got two in one. I'm, I really quite am loving this wisp brush. I was talking about more, I'm so at the moment I'm talking about unusual brushes. Uh, I've got another unusual brush. This one here is called a whale brush because it's tip is shaped like a uh, whale. So it's also a black gold. Um, is that what I called this one, black gold? Yes, black gold, but it's not the 311. It's a size one, and I'm here to tell you, don't waste your money on that one. Just useless. Or actually, if you've got any good ideas about how to use that whale brush, that would be awesome. Maybe it's just not meant for watercolour, and maybe I um, should be using it as in acrylics. I'm really unsure, but I got... Um, I found that I wanted to try it out, you know, how you're online sometimes buying stuff and you go, ooh, I think I'll try that as well. It was a waste of money. I'm just going to talk about another type of brush that I have. Not technically a watercolour brush, but it, this is a Princeton, Princeton Select called Fix It. And I'll just lay it there. Its bristles are incredibly short and it's designed for corrections. So insanely hard and I find that when I do I did use it for a while but it just kept digging straight into the paper so I kind of stopped using it so again if you've got some good ideas about um, a brush that's designed for corrections I'd love to hear about it uh, the other kind of brush that I haven't mentioned yet are these water brushes so lid and bristles quite stiff and then you've got a little ampule down here it screws off it screws off you put water in the bottom half and um i'll just show you the tip of that oh i mean the bottom <laughs> you fill it with water and then when you want to paint with it you squeeze the barrel and the water goes up to the brush and you can paint with it. These are superb for travel because you don't have to worry about um, packing lots of water. Right. I've got one more type of brush that I'm going to show you. Uh, this one here is a Da Vinci Spin. And while the, I use it like a flat brush, so marvellous because it's got this end to it. If I turn it that way, you can see how thin it is, marvellous for lifting off. However, the I don't know if you can see the damage. I've attempted to fix it with um, nail polish 
all the uh, paint started cracking off. But that's my fault, really. I would have left it on some sort of wet towel. This is back in the days before I used my brush holder. These days that wouldn't happen because every time I use it, I would sit it on the brush holder and then it's not in contact with something wet, whereas it would have been in contact with something wet and that's how the paint starts to slowly come off. So not the fault of the brush, totally my fault there. And um, my attempt to fix it with nail polish has kind of worked, but you can see it's continuing to crack. Um, and I really enjoyed this brush for a long time, but once it starts to peel like that, I find the joy in using them um, kind of <laughs> kind of leaves me. I'm just looking for any other brushes I have. Oh, I didn't think to talk about the purpose of this beautiful one. It's called a rigger, but it's it's a fat rigger, and it's wonderful for holding a lot of water if you're feeling um, like doing a stack of water. I was doing some long uh, marks like that. So the next thing I thought I would talk about are um, ways to use um, all the different brushes. I'm going to start with my essentials, which is this set here. I'm just going to clear some of these away. I'm going to zoom out so that hopefully you can see my... I'm just going to put that there and then I've got, I'll zoom out so you can see my palette. And you can see my water there. Oh, I mustn't forget to talk about this little cleaning tool uh, when it comes to talking about... I'm going to um, be indulgent, use a piece of ash to demonstrate lots of um, brush strokes. I'm going to start with my most recent purchase, which is the, I'm just searching for it here again, the Wisp. Because I'm amazed at how many different things I'm finding to use with the wisp. If I move that down, just push that there so all of that is on screen. There's my brushes lined up and I'll put the water here. And I'm gonna start with the wisp brush. And I sprayed my palette and squeezed out some fabulous red. So the wisp is capable of this sort of beautiful stroke. Lovely little bit of dry brush there. I'm going to wet it and continue to use the, just move the brush around the page like that. So marvellous for, I'm just going to give it a little twist as I use it. Marvellous for grasses. Like that. That's the wisp brush. Just washing that off and dumping it over on the side there. Here's my quill, my black gold quill. This is the size two. I'm going to wet it. I always wet it first. I think it helps the brush uh, take up the paint. I'm loading again with this beautiful red. And the beauty of this brush is that you can do fat strokes and thin. And within the one stroke, you can go fat up to thin. I'm often painting petals, and I'm just going to grab some water and put down a little bit of water. And when I'm painting petals, I'll often use the belly of the brush as well as the tip of the brush. And when you go for a size like this, you can keep painting. So I haven't had to reload, 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 which is what you have to do with little tiny brushes. They slow you down otherwise. So that's my size 
two. I'm going to dump that one and demonstrate the triple zero. Wet it again. And um, maybe I'll use some burnt sienna. So the brush stroke is incredibly similar, fat, thin, but it's a smaller version. So I find that if I'm painting something smaller, a smaller flower, then I'm going to be able to use, I'm, I'm going to be able to uh, paint smaller petals. I'm just adding lots of water there and making it. Uh, I'm just doing some lovely, I'm just enjoying myself. I'm twisting the brush as I go and you get lovely marks. The other thing that I'm doing is holding the brush up here because I'm free painting at the moment. If you want complete control, you hold it like a pencil. If you want to be freer in your painting, you can paint it, hold it further up the uh, bristle. Get rid of that one. This one is the size zero, so incredibly similar. But here's the flat brush. And I tend to use flat brushes at the end. I'm wiping off the excess moisture. I tend to use it at the end. So for lifting off, lift a bit. I might zoom in so you can see that a little better. Um, wash it off, put it on the towel. Remove some, put it on the towel, wash it off. And every single time I remove and put it on the towel, remove, put it on the towel. And you can see here that I'm able to lift some of the paint. And it's often at the end of a painting that I need to do some corrections or I need to remove some painting, some paint or I need to lighten a section. As soon as I start painting, it, I uh, you'll find that I don't finish my sentences. When, it, when I'm editing my YouTube videos, it's just full of me starting a sentence and then not finishing it. I'm just continuing to remove a section from that little red painted one and you can see how marvelous the flat brush is for removing of course the other thing that it will do are some beautiful straight lines so if you're painting within something quite geometric you know the side of a house a fence paling the flat brush is wonderful for straight lines uh, painting on the side of anything really and here's my little tiny liner brush. The one I mentioned is a little shorter than a rigger. And load up again. And I'll add a little water, make it runnier, and it might go a little further. And I use it for so many things but tiny things. So I'm just going to add to the grasses there. Add, add, add. And then you can see that it does those beautiful long lines. Marvellous for a whole stack of stuff. So say, for example, I'm just put down some lovely watery paint. You're painting petal. And I've been painting um, my, I've been painting blossoms, and the petal shape is kind of like that. So now I'm going to use the liner brush, load, load up with some thicker red. So this is a light tone full of water, and what I'm going to add is thick um, paint. You can use this. If I turn it like that, that might be easier to see as I drag the brush through. <laughs> I'll turn it that way. Drag the thick paint through. You can get some really lovely effects. Looks a little bit like a shell. 
Love that one. I could also use it with water. I'm going to drag it through the red and see if I can split that pigment apart. Just dragging water through, reloading, and but not getting rid of, not drying it off. I'm getting rid of the drip so I don't make drips on my page. But you'll be able to slowly see that pigment is splitting apart. I'll just hold that up, see if you can see that beautiful mark that that's made there. It's really wet and it will continue to split for the next couple of um, minutes. Um, the other thing that I thought I would talk about, I've already talked about storage and the different parts of the brush, different types of brushes, the different types of bristles. We've talked about brush strokes. Is there a brush you'd like me to demonstrate? Um, I've talked about brushes that you use for other media, uh, like acrylics and um, oils. And I think that um, brushes that work for acrylics seem to work for oils as well. Don't quote me on that one. I'm not an oil painter. I only ever dabble in oils. I've talked about um, brush storage, and uh, I also wanted to talk about um, maintenance. So in order to prepare for this, I went online and found some awesome resources. So um, I'll please uh, make a comment in uh, if you'd like to receive the links to some of these resources that list all types of brush types and how to look after them. And I found this awesome article by Birgit O'Connor. I hope I'm saying that right. Uh, Birgit O'Connor. Um, oh, thanks, Tiffany. I'll come back to that in a sec. Um, anyway, it's an article written by Birgit O'Connor about um, maintenance of your brushes. And she talks about really basic stuff like um, wash them out, um, I know that seems completely obvious, but I'm just going to talk about that maintenance uh, in a second. Uh, Tiffany just asked, it, I find or commented, I find red sable difficult to use or you don't know how to use it. And I don't know that I have a red sable. I'm just going to put those back for a second. But I suspect very much that this is what a sable brush is like. There are a lot of um, Asian brushes, Japanese brushes, Chinese brushes that behave in a different way to watercolour brushes with spring in them. So, for example, this uh, Haka brush is, I would call that an Asian brush, and I'm pretty sure that this one here, see how I can move it to a point and it um, remains there. The same will happen with the Haka brush. I'm just going to wet the bristles. And now that it's wet, I'll just get rid of the dab drips, you can bend it. I'll bend it. <laughs> it's not really doing what I'm talking about see how I can bend it and it remains really really messy the natural hairs um, such as sable and I'm pretty sure this is a natural hair one I think it's sable but I um, am not sure I find though that the natural hair brushes don't have the spring in them. So you use them in quite a different way when they're um, the type of brush that moves to the side. So if you've ever done one of those courses in Asian art, I'm going to demonstrate using this um, big mop. I'm going to wet it and um, I'm just going to get another piece of paper. I've got some cheap paper here, some Enco. Just uh, grab a piece of this paper. Yeah, so the mop I'm talking about at the moment and how different it is. Uh, right, so I've wet it. I'm going to zoom out so you can see me going in and out of my palette. And I'm going to pick up some red. So it's 
doesn't allow a proper point. Well, I shouldn't say proper. It's a soft point. It's quite a different look and action. But when it's big like this, I know that Tiffany wasn't asking about big, but just while I'm painting, how fast with a mop brush you can get through a big section. Um, so it is capable of maintaining the shape you've left it in. So if I put it down like that, it keeps that. So that means, and you see this in Japanese, Asian paintings, they use the brush in a particular way. They have brush strokes that, in, that are very kind of zen and mindful and beautiful uh, because they maintain that shape. Whereas what I tend to use, I'm just going to wash it out. Uh, talking about brush care, I'm going to come to brush care in a second. So I'm going to wash it out and dump it over there. Whereas if I do that same thing with a quill, I'm going to load up. Every time I do a stroke, it goes back to that point. So I can start with a more pointy point. <laughs> I can also tilt the brush and get a, a thinner point and then come down. But every single time I use it, it bounces back to its original um, position. Um, and Tiffany mentioned a couple of branches then, Raphael and Da Vinci. And I mentioned um, one of those brushes was a Da Vinci, uh, Princeton, this, I think the little flat one, this, this is the only Da Vinci brush that I own. Um, a lot of the brushes in the beginning I bought from Riot and then they stopped selling really nice um, watercolour brushes and they sold other annoying kinds, kinds of uh, watercolour brushes. Um, so I don't know much about Raphael at all. Um, but I'm wondering whether Tiffany's question about the sable bristle is to do with the fact that it doesn't um, bounce back. Um, so I was going to talk about cleaning, and since this brush is loaded, I'm going to get rid of this paper, come back to my jars of water. Now, they are both red at the moment, but one darker than the other. Uh, I try to use a system of dirty water and clean water. I give every brush um, a rinse in the dirty water and then the clean water. And, of course, the clean water slowly gets dirtier. But the um, uh, And if I want to, I could change the water at any time. But I don't want to in the middle of painting. I like to get the flow going and not stop. That's why I have two jars of water so I don't have to um, change my water. So Karen just said that she's been wondering about that for years. So which bit were you wondering about, the different types of um, bristles? Um, just while Karen's answering that question, I'm going to talk about this little brush cleaner. Oh, no, I'll finish talking about this. So dirty water, clean water, and that's all I use while I'm painting. And then at the very end of painting, I get another two jars of water and I make sure that the final jar of water is incredibly clean, that there's nothing left in it. Uh, I have on many occasions left my paintbrush sitting, drying. I like to leave them drying flat. On many occasions I've left the paint on them Ah, oh, thanks, Karen. Yeah, bristle behaviour. Yeah, yeah, they sit in different ways. So leaving them lying flat, I think, is really good because you're not, if you leave them drying vertically, <laughs> it's hard for you to see because of my uh, top camera, top down camera, you will be encouraging that moisture to travel down into the ferrule. And as I've mentioned, in the ferrule, there is a, a type of glue in many brushes and you might be sending the water down there. You might be um, not allowing the wood to dry out. So I allow all my brushes to lie flat. That's the other reason why my brush holder is awesome because the brushes sit flat all the time. Um, and then... Occasionally, because I've let the watercolour dry on it, it's not a problem the next day 
I do think I will slowly ruin those brushes, but I'm just demonstrating here that I just sit for a good minute. It takes a little while for that um, watercolour to come off and then go into the second jar and I just repeat the process over and over and over until it's gone. I try really hard not to drag the tip of my beautiful brush over the bottom of the jar because slowly that's the part of the brush that's going to uh, be damaged, so I do tend to look after it. So this is a little tiny thing. It's a little tiny container. Can, is it possible to see it? It's called brush cleaner. The masters, and then there's some French words. Oh, if Tiffany could speak, she could read. Oh, I'm going to say this and make Tiffany laugh. Nettoyant de deux pinceaux. I can hear Tiffany laughing to herself because she speaks French. So what you do, it's kind of like soap, and you just put a little bit on your brush. And I've been amazed at how this gets out any remnants of watercolour. So on those occasions, <laughs> yes, Tiffany wrote the word. She, she knew what I was saying. That's pretty good. Or is that because I said brush cleaner? <laughs> that just means brush cleaner. <laughs> Sounds way more beautiful than brush cleaner. Anyway, I've got a little bit of soap and then you just wash it off and that will get rid of any remnants. So whether or not I've um, got a little cutie bit of soap here, I don't know. It might work just as perfectly, but the little container is brilliant and so easy to throw into my kit of stuff for those times when I've let the uh, watercolour dry on my brush. I did say it properly. That's very nice of that. Oh, where did I get that? It was a freebie. Uh, Alex, thanks for asking. But if you want to go find, well, when I say a freebie, it, I should say it was a gift. Um, that's a much nicer way to say what it was. Um, but if you go looking for it, it's called The Masters Brush Cleaner, and it says use with water. I can't give you any other information here. But it does say on the back that it um, cleans wet and dry oil, paint, acrylic, and watercolour. I suspect it is soup. Um, right. So I can't think of anything else that I was going to cover today. I did parts and types and bristles, strokes, quality, uh, other types of brushes for other media, cleaning, storage, and um, maintenance. And maintenance is about washing them and storing them flat. And I'm going to come back to the very beginning in case anyone missed this at the beginning because I started um, early. This is my first ever live stream and um, so I logged on and and the it just began streaming and um, <laughs> so I thought I'd just tell you what I was talking about at the very beginning, which is, I'm going to turn it on its side so it stops reflecting at you, which is how I ha store my brushes. It's called an art bin and um, it's the best um, paintbrush storage that I've ever owned and it really only cost uh, like 20 bucks maybe um, something like that and what's brilliant about it is that it's got firm foam ho holders that you can slot your brushes in and easily out of I can see everything that uh, I need to, I'm just to put it on an angle again and so all that big reflection is happening, isn't it? Um, I can see everything, but the be best part about it is if I turn it on the side, can you see there's one, two, <laughs> three holders, excuse me, not being able to work backwards. I'm left-handed and I struggle with <laughs> going in the opposite direction. Alex says, I try to make a brush cleaner and I wouldn't do that again. Oh, <laughs> well, that was a good tip then. That's interesting. So that perhaps that's um oh I wonder why I wonder what's in a makeup brush cleaner that um I wonder if it's got some sort of oil that would be um very interesting anyway I've come full circle back to my awesome um art bin I really wish oh look I've just made a big mess of myself I really wish I'm just gonna reach it for a tissue I really wish that um, I could um, put a link down below to wherever I bought the art bin from and get a commission. 
That's very mean of me, isn't it? Okay, I'm going to put the link down below <laughs> uh, so that you can go and find it. It's uh, from an online store, but I don't remember which one. I go to lots of online stores. Um, and I like to wait for specials, so that's how I got that one there. Um, ah, Alex says, yes, please. I will. I'll put that link down below. Um, is there anything else that you can think of that you'd like me to cover today? I've gone for 49 minutes. I'm pretty amazed at that. I've been talking nonstop for 49 minutes. Oh, actually, it's 59 minutes because <laughs> I started a little early. So what I'm thinking is that um, I really appreciate that you guys joined in. So if you'd like to do this next Thursday, um, then I'd love some suggestions about a topic that I could talk about. Or, you know, do you want to paint together. We could uh, find a subject. Uh, thank you, Karen. That's a wonderful thing to say. And um, uh, yeah, so if you've got a suggestion, I'd love to, um, yeah, miss you too, Alex. I'd love to do another one next week because this has been like a lovely thing to do during lockdown. Uh, because I live in the south of Sydney, and we are in lockdown till the end of August. I cannot believe it, but uh, that's actually true. Look at my I've got this paint. I really appreciate. Oh, thank you, Karen. That's lovely. Um, I really appreciate. You can message me, guys, um, if you've got anything uh, to paint together, Tiffany, right? Then I'll come up with a subject that uh, we could paint together. And you know what? It's very likely to be gum leaves because gum leaves are accessible to nearly everyone, especially if you uh, live in Australia. And um, they are so easy and beautiful to paint. Um, right. I will put my thinking cap on about that. And it's very likely to be gum leaves. So if you want to join me next Thursday, Find some fresh gum leaves. I love painting from um, – oh, Alex is uh, going traveling. I'm jealous, Alex. I cannot go traveling. I cannot go further than five um, kilometers. Oh, excellent. Karen loves the idea of um, gum leaves as well. Oh, did I say Alex or Karen the second ago? doesn't matter. The point is – Let's get together next Thursday as well and paint gum leaves together. Thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. See you next Thursday. Bye, everyone.